G'day guys. Happy Christmas, it is Wednesday. And because Christmas day has fallen on a Wednesday, we thought we would put out this bonus little extra video for you guys, Joy, um, about all of our favorite things that we went through this year. We've had our first year on the road as travelers, vlogging and having a ball really, and just doing the stuff we love, as we keep saying. So I put this little episode together to recap the last really nine months, but basically 12 months, and to answer a few of the questions that you guys have been hounding us with lately, which we're super grateful for, but we thought we'd just knock them all out in one go, so you guys understand a little bit about what we are up to, what we've got planned, and just sort of what it has been like being on the road for 12 months. Absolutely. So while we're in Melbourne, we're here until March, and then we'll take off in March. We've got ourselves a couple of casual jobs, which is just horrifying, really, because I've forgotten how to work. Um, and she's ruined it for me. I used to work like 45 yeah. plus hours a week, and now I, I don't like it. <laughs> exactly. So working as lifeguards again, as we usually do, making a bit of cash, because obviously we can't just travel full time at the moment. Um, but all of your support has been helping us out a shite load. So thank you so much for all of that. But since we've been home, a lot of our friends and families and you guys who have subscribed to us and followed us on Instagram and Facebook have had a lot of the same questions. So I've written a few of them out here and we will do the best we can to answer them, I think. Yes. Okay, good. Do we get paid for these videos? The quick answer is no. no. We make zero money. Um, we put our heart and souls into every single one of these videos. We kill ourselves filming them, we kill ourselves editing them, but we have a ball doing it, so it is all worth it. But at this stage, we do not get paid a cent for this. We are doing it because we enjoy it, to keep our friends and family updated with where we are in the world and what we are doing, and to inspire you guys to bite the bullet and do something you love. Yeah. So, yeah. No, which is, for me, I've always been a cricketer, and I've been so content of just working the nine to five before I met this one. Uh, she's pulled me away from that and we've truly found a hobby that we really enjoy and that's being able to vlog to you guys and capture all the beautiful scenes that we've been across Australia and also Japan and hopefully the future. Um, it's been awesome. Yes, so we hope to one day be able to make a little bit of cash off this so we don't have to keep stopping and working all the time. But at this stage, um, we do have to stop and work occasionally, but we ten tend to take enough content so we don't have to worry too much. But once we get to a thousand subscribers and we are on our way there, that will help us out a lot. So anytime you like or comment or subscribe to our channel, it's honestly the greatest thing in the world. Like you honestly have no idea. Yeah. It seems like such a small thing and if you're not a big YouTube watcher in the first place, you probably don't even think of it. I know. You know, 18 months ago, I didn't subscribe to my favorite YouTubers. I didn't like or comment, but now I make sure I do because we understand how much it takes to get these videos out and the value that goes into all of them. And hopefully the value you get out of them too would make just a subscribe or a like worth it. Absolutely. We can't stress enough how much of a difference it makes. So if you don't have a YouTube account, guys, we're looking at all of our friends and family who do not have YouTube accounts. Make a YouTube account just so you can give us a like. You've all got emails, so that means you're capable of actually logging on you to YouTube. You have an email, you can make a YouTube account, so do it. How long does it take to produce a YouTube episode? Kieran, how long does it take you to produce a YouTube episode? It takes me about six months, so I've contributed <laughs> to maybe four videos out of like the 70 we've now put out there. I think this is our 41st video. Mm. Realistically, to film, it depends on what we're doing. When we film an episode, we are basically filming all day, 24 hours while we're awake, we're always filming and then we break it up into episodes as we go, which is why our episodes are a little messy, but you know, we're kind of messy people. When it comes down to editing, to edit an episode, it, I average about eight to 10 hours to get it finished. Kieran will generally stitch a lot of footage and then I'll finish it off. Um, but just what we're doing at the moment, which isn't very highly complicated or technical or interesting really stuff, um, it takes me about 10, eight to 10 hours to get the episode completely wrapped up and pretty to go. And then uploading it to YouTube, making thumbnails and tagging and describing and all these things that it takes to make a YouTube video. That will probably take me another couple of hours. So you're looking at 10 to 12 hours. Because of the time it takes to edit, we are sitting approximately three to four months behind. So at the moment, the Darwin episodes are just about to be finished in the next two to three weeks. Then we'll be moving on to Central Australia, which holy crap, I'm so excited yeah. about. And then Japan, which is sick. But yeah, at the moment it's about four months. Okay, what did the road trip cost? We hadn't actually done the figures up until now, and literally just then we sat down and worked it out. Right. So we're just calculating the prices now. We've been home for like ever. We, it's been quite a while. We're calculating the West Coast prices when we did our West Coast trip, but that was like, we finished the West Coast trip in June and it's now December. 
That's what we're gonna do now. It's gonna be a bit frightening because... And I'm honestly <laughs> horrified. I don't wanna know. It's why I've never calculated it no. before. No. Let's take a guess. What do you reckon it's gonna be? Uh, I'd say about 10 grand. No! Yeah. Okay, he says 10 grand. I say it's about 10 grand. We were getting paid while we were traveling though with long service leave from our jobs. So I think I thought it was cheap, but it actually wasn't. I reckon fuel itself was about four grand. I'm gonna say the trip was five grand. Oh, geez, she's underselling it for sure. If it's all food, I'm gonna cry. I feel like our fuel bill is gonna be high because you kept buying hot dogs. <laughs> it's all hot dog hot money. Dog. Oh, I bought a village, yeah, that's when you- uh, That was when you bought your hat. Yeah, when I bought my hat and when Hannah had that film oh, where she was burger. like- Oh, the burger. Should we put our speeding fines on this as well? No, no, that was all your <laughs> fucking fault, mate. <laughs> I got one the day we left Darwin and I deserved it. And she deserved it. Oh. Coles again, $13.50. Enough! Mm. Uh, all right, Carnarvon 66. That was for- Accommodation? No, that was a- com um. <whistles> um, Space Center. <laughs> Popped tire, forty-seven ninety-five. Other? Yeah. Let's see it. A broom hospital, twenty-four. Other. I had a bag of grapes for dinner, and you had a halal snack pack. Oh yeah, that's right. Been Macca's like... broom. This was all while I was in the hospital. Yep. Eight dollars eighty. Yep. Another Domino's. What were you doing when I was in the hospital? <laughs> Okay, we're done. We're done. So now we've got to add them all up. Oh, I don't want to know. That you, when we go traveling next year, we are not eating out, eating out once a day. I mean, once a week. Once a day? Once a week. Agree. <laughs> That's so much money. All right, here we go. Food. All right, $17.85. Okay. Ha, ha, ham. Food. One thousand nine hundred and ninety and seventy-one cents. I thought with that huge list of numbers it was going to be so much more, mm. but no. Uh, it's it's nine uh, one thousand nine hundred and nine dollars, not one thousand nine hundred. Yeah, I'm a little bit dyslexic with numbers. Yeah. Fuel twenty-one eighty-five. I mean two thousand one hundred eighty-five. Do you want me to read this? <laughs> no, I'm good. Yes. Accommodation one thousand seven hundred and seven dollars. Correct and seventy-five cents. Activities. I'm gonna have to do some quick math. Two plus two is four, minus one, that's three. Activities, $2,393, which is very surprising. Very surprising. But $800 of that was diving with the sharks. Which Proudly I sponsored by Hannah Herbert. <laughs> Bangrolled by me. <laughs> but no, I rate that. I will do it again. No, that was... And other $627. So that's saying that all of your hat badges were $627. <laughs> Seven, drum roll, please. Eight thousand eight hundred and twenty-one. You were closer. I was. I was close. I, I five. So for two months of travel around Australia, where it was probably done yeah. a little bit more on the expensive side. For two months, that yeah. for me is too much. But here's the thing, guys. If you want to help us out, hit that subscribe button. <laughs> Once we get to a thousand, we will start bankrolling these little travels, and also. You know, out of the good spirits of your heart, if you want to chuck some money our way, you can just message me on Instagram or Facebook and I'll, I'll show you how you can do that. It's very easy, really. Um, we're a little bit poor and we want to keep going. We are a bit poor. Um, so you're all getting hugs for Christmas. So the road trip came to just over $8,000. Could you imagine it was only $800? $800. The road trip she still came, would be freaking out about it. The road trip came to $8,800 for two months, which when you say two months, it sounds absolutely horrifying, but you've got to remember that we only had a car mm. and we had to pay for accommodation, food, fuel, and we did a lot of sick activities. Like, Very let's just insert uh, like a snippet of all the cool shit we did. Mm. <laughs> I just walked towards. Let's go caving. Wow. Good, bad, ugly.
I think it might have been a crab because I've like lost skin on the end of my finger. Can you not go so fast? Yeah, yeah, it's cool, right? <laughs> really fucking cool. Uh, but expensive, mate. Like Australia is an expensive country. How many kilometers did we do just to get to Darwin for the West Coast uh, trip? And I think it was like 17. Yeah. 000? No, oh, it was really close. I thought it was 19. Close I, to 20,000. Yeah, close to 20,000. Yeah. But yeah, West Australia, about 20,000 kilometers, which yeah. is so cool to think about. Really cool. Once you've done it, it doesn't seem that big, but looking out on the map, it's like, whoa. Yeah. What was your favorite place or activity that you've done in the last 12 months? Rem Trek. Uh, it was a stargazing experience, and this was in Karajani, and it was it's known to be one of the best in Australia because of how dark and how the light pollution doesn't exist. Yeah, so there's next to zero light pollution in Karajani. Yeah, and you got to use your phone on these telescopes oh, and to yeah. take a photo of the That's moon. Right. So we might actually post one of these. Yeah, photos. there's some sick moon photos. Cool. That's a good one, actually. I'd forgotten about that. Yeah. My favorite had to have been the whale sharks. Um, I was obsessed. I love anything marine. Kieran's having like flashbacks, just yeah. ignore him right now. Um, swimming with whale sharks just blew my mind. I was like the most like eager little human ever. Oh, I've never swam so hard in my life to see such beautiful creatures. They were huge and so overwhelming. And on the Niglo Reef of all places, like holy yeah. hell, can we get any lucky? That was my favorite, definitely the whale sharks. Kieran, what was your least favorite activity in the last 12 months? The whale sharks. <laughs> and that was not because I saw the whale sharks and what it... You got to swim with them twice, but you got horribly oh, seasick. my god. I got terrible seasickness and... Yeah, so you were out for worst. basically the whole day. I, I dived in twice and without being too describing, I threw up in my snorkel. What's yours? Mine. Um, oh, I have an interesting uh, one. My least favourite thing of the entire last 12 months, apart from like general flying on aeroplanes, which I hate, um, was driving along the Nullarbor. And you want to know why, Kieran? Do you want to know why? I know why, because she was worried about how many days we weren't going to have going around. No, so. that is so not true. I had planned this trip out minute by minute, and I knew that if we spent two nights on the Nullarbor, I would get to see the big galah, and I would get to see the windmill farm, and the crazy little cactus farm, and the, the great Australian bite. How often do you get to see cliffs and then nothing. We got a bit of drone footage, but... It's shit. Yeah. Sorry, but it's shit. I was disappointed I want to do the Nullarbor again because there is some cool stuff to do on the Nullarbor. You could actually make a little mini trip out of the Nullarbor. So if you are going to the Nullarbor, guys, please take your time. Please be safe. Do a bit of it's gnarly. Than us. But I think Kieran was very overexcited for his first big road trip and he was just like, <laughs> just trying to get there. So we didn't we didn't spend the night on the Nullarbor. We did the whole thing in a day. It was yeah. just hell on wheels, quite literally. Yeah. What was the most unexpected place you came across in the last 12 months? What surprised you? Nara was, uh, Han told me, he was like, oh, there's a place where all these deers come up. And, so many little deers. And I was like, oh. yeah, there'll be a couple of deers we might spot in a distance and they'll run away, but no, they don't. Parklands full of deer. They literally It's come all up. temples and deer and deer and temples. Oh. And how amazing is Nara? It was awesome. Yeah, very unexpected. And I've, yeah, we spent the whole day there and I probably could have spent another day there as well. My most unexpected place, not really unexpected because I've been there, but Cooper Pedy. Honestly guys, Cooper Pedy is the most bonkers town. There's like natural phenomenons to go and see, yeah. like when we went out to the breakaways. There's like, it's like a movie set, Cooper Pedy. It's just this rugged, dusty, hot, gnarly ass place in the middle of Central Australia. It's bananas. There's this like big Hollywood sign up the top, which is so sick. We had fun photographing that, didn't we? Honestly, you, yeah. I don't know what Cooperpedia is, but if you haven't been to Cooperpedia, you need to put it on your bucket list. It is the most random ass town in Australia, but it is the greatest. It's like Tatooine if you're a Star Wars fan. <laughs> she pop culture wise. Um, looks like the one out of the space movie. Yeah, which had what? The the big fairy man that goes. <laughs> <laughs> you mean Chewbacca? <laughs> No, Cooper Petey, so sick, yeah, loved really it. Cool. Also, Devil's Marbles. Have oh, Devil's Marbles. yeah, that was really cool. Actually, that's up there on my favorite places to film and photograph, which leads us nicely into, what was your favorite place to film and photograph in the last 12 months? Uh, mine was Cal Barry. Yeah, the Pink Lake, the Cliffs. 
nature's, nature's window, the drone almost getting taken out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I think mine would easily have to be Uluru because, look, Uluru can be a little bit overrated at times, but honestly, you forget how incredible it is. If you haven't been there before, driving up to it for the first time, I remember you driving up for the first time, it's just like, at the size of it, it is just this behemoth of a rock. And there is so much Australian culture and poems and music written around the fact that at sunset, the rock changes colour. So obviously, being the time-lapse aficionado that I am, I just, oh, the time-lapse. I might put it in here, I might not. We'll see how I'm feeling when I edit this. And our lucky life question. We are not going to give away too much about our travels for next year yet, mostly because we have no idea what we're doing. We are doing some things, but we'll get to that later. Yeah. Um, next year, I am very, very excited to be spending some time in some beautiful, lush, ass rainforests and photographing some incredible wildlife and just spending some time um, in one of the most beautiful rainforests in the world. You did pretty well not giving it away, but... See what you guys reckon. If you know what I'm talking about, let us know in the comments below. I guarantee you'll be wrong, probably because my facts are wrong. I don't know if it is the most beautiful rainforest <laughs> in the world, but it is definitely up there as one of the most incredible rainforests in the world. What are you most looking forward to next year? Uh, so, I think I'm looking forward to probably one of the more amazing places, uh, the more the sulfur hot springs. Yeah, we're gonna be hitting up some pretty insane hot spring country next year. See if you can in another is. country that is not Australia. Yeah. Um, I have been there. People who know me, they'll give it away a little bit. But you are going to die. Yeah, I love it. Oh, so good. Mm. But yeah, anyway guys, I hope this video wasn't too long for you all. We are so grateful and so thankful to even be able to sit here in December wrapping up our last nine months slash 12 months but nine our first nine months of traveling although this year has not been what we expected at all I think that's mostly because we didn't know what to expect but it has exceeded um, any Thing I could have imagined. It has been the most fun year of my life and honestly it's been so refreshing for us to be able to go out, pursue something that we love and change our lives for the better. All of the good and all of that, we are eternally grateful. They're the best, they're the best Christmas present you can give to us is your like and subscribe. Honestly, if you want to give us a Christmas present, we don't want anything else except for like and subscribe because those such small contributions actually get us so much closer to where we want to be and where we need to be over the next few years. But going into 2020, we are just excited to be filming more, photographing more, doing stuff we love more. And honestly, I don't even know. I'm just so excited to get into 2020. Like, come on, 2020. Yeah. Like, sure. it's gonna be so good. Oh, next week's episode, guys, we are getting back on track, regular scheduled programming with part two of Kakadu. Um, we are visiting Yellow Water Billabong Cruise with the most insane indigenous local guy telling us all about Kakadu. And honestly, I haven't put the video together yet, so I don't know what else is going to be in there, but it's going to be cool. So get ready to check that out. Again, new videos at some point on a Wednesday morning. And um, yeah, we'll catch you in 2020. Peace out, guys. Cheers. Yeah, oh really? Whoa, yes, what are yes, you yes, doing? Yes. Right. Right. Oh, right. dude, it's tiny, how'd you screw that up? I can see the angle of it. Yeah. Can you not go so fast? That was silly. That was so silly. Whoops. Got a little bit too ahead of myself. I will admit, got too ahead of myself. What happened? Broken. It's stuck in the it's sky. Stuck. It's like it's caught in a web. Every time we try to do drone footage, this happens.